Welcome back to the Astro Park, everyone. My name is Kwesi Aqua, and this video will be another continuation of the series that I call My Telescope Family, where I talk about the different types of telescopes that I personally own and use for astronomy and astrophotography. So today's video is going to be all about the Lunt LS80MT. So let's get this guy up on the mount and I'll talk about all of its features. The Lunt LS80MT is a doublet apochromatic refractor telescope. So to break down the naming convention, the LS stands for the manufacturer, which is Lunt Solar Systems. However, the MT means that this telescope is a modular telescope, which is universal. So this telescope can be used for both daytime and nighttime observing and imaging which gives the telescope some added versatility. And the lens is a doublet design, so there's two lens elements in this system, and one of those lenses is made of ED, or extra low dispersion glass, to help minimize the chromatic aberration and the ED element used in this telescope is made of FPL 53 glass. So, as its namesake would suggest, the Lunt LS80 MT has an 80 millimeter aperture and a 560 millimeter focal length which gives the telescope a focal ratio of f7. So with that f7 focal ratio, it gives the telescope a nice medium-sized field of view to give you access to a wide array of objects up in the sky. So let's begin by talking about the telescope in its daytime configuration as I have it set up here. So during the day, you'll be observing and imaging the sun in the hydrogen alpha wavelength. And you'll be doing this by using what's known as a hydrogen alpha etalon, which is this red device right here. An etalon is basically a large narrowband filter. However, it has a very small band pass, which is measured in angstroms as opposed to nanometers for nighttime filters. So how it works is that the sunlight will enter the telescope at the lens, and then the light will then hit the etalon in the back, and it will block all of the light with the exception of the hydrogen alpha wavelength. And etalons are usually tuned to give you the best contrast to help you resolve the best details. And the tuning system is either tilt tuned or pressure tuned. So the Edelon used in the LS80 MT is a pressure tuning system. So this large knob on the side will help you to adjust the pressure inside of the Edelon to help you get the best contrast as well as help you resolve fine details on the sun such as coronal mass ejections, solar flares, and sunspots, for example. And for an additional cost, you can add a second etalon to the system to create a double stack to help you get a higher contrast as well as resolve finer details. Now, in conjunction with the etalon, you also have to use what's known as a blocking filter. And blocking filters are required for all Lunt telescopes. So the blocking filter comes in either a straight tube design or a star diagonal design. 
and in the device are a series of ultraviolet and infrared blocking filters to block any stray UV and IR light that the Edelon may have missed. And then the remaining light goes up to the eyepiece or your camera sensor. So it's a perfectly safe system to observe and image the sun. And behind the Edelon is the two inch focuser system. And Lunt gives you the option of using either a two inch Crayford style focuser or a two inch rack and pinion focuser. So I decided to use the two inch rack and pinion focuser since they're known for their heavy lifting capability. And the focuser is cut diagonally at a bias to help prevent any slippage of the column when the telescope is pointed up towards the zenith. Now, you may have noticed that although I have the option to add this attachment, there's no place to put a binder scope bracket. This is because you never want to use a finder scope when working with the sun because the high intensity light from the sun's rays will actually damage the optics of the scope and if you put your eye up to the finder scope let's just say it's going to be a pretty bad day so you never want to use a finder scope when working with the sun unless it has the proper solar protection installed so in that regard, alongside the carrying handle to help you lift and transport the telescope, there's also a built-in solar finder to help you locate the sun. So the sunlight actually enters a small hole in the front and it casts a red dot in the back, which represents the sun. So you can slew the telescope in such a way where that red dot is in the center and that will tell you that the sun should be somewhere in the field of view of your eyepiece or camera sensor. Now to convert the telescope into its nighttime configuration, you simply loosen the three set screws here, detach the Edelon and focuser assembly, and then you can add a standard focuser in its place. And once again, Lunt gives you the option of using a two inch Crayford focuser or a two inch rack and pinion focuser. So I decided once again to use the rack and pinion focuser. So you basically put the standard focuser in the back, tighten the set screws, and you've now converted the telescope to its standard classic nighttime mode. And with that, focal ratio of f7, it'll give you access to image the small to medium sized deep space objects, which come in the form of assorted galaxies, star clusters, and nebulae targets. And for the solar system, you can get a full disk image of the moon, and you can also put a Barlow lens in the system to get up and close to image some mountains as well as craters and you can also image the sun in the white light and calcium k wavelengths and the last thing i want to talk about is the sliding dew shield which is now the standard for most refractor telescopes so you can basically extend the dew shield fully to prevent the formation of dew on the lens, as well as prevent any external light sources. And it looks like my requests have finally been answered because just like my Orion Eon 70 ED, the dew shield contains a series of hex screws that you can tighten to make the dew shield nice and snug so that it doesn't slip around when the telescope is slewing to its target. And then when you're finished, you can basically bring the dew shield down back to its retracted state. And the telescope will then fit into its heavy duty case that it comes packaged with. 
and the case has a cutout foam insert to include the telescope as well as any accessories that you can use such as your external focuser as well as assorted blocking filters. Here's a few sample images that I've taken so far using the LS80MT. So that was my overview for the Lunt LS80MT. Just like the Edge HD series of telescopes by Celestron, the MT series by Lunt gives you some added versatility. So if you're somebody that's on a limited budget and you want one telescope to cover all aspects of the sky, whether it's in the daytime or the nighttime, then I would consider checking out the MT series of Universal Telescopes by Lunt. The Lunt MT series comes in 60mm, 80mm, 100mm, and 130mm apertures. So you can select the one that best fits your lifestyle as well as meets your personal observing and imaging requirements. As always, thank you for watching Astro Park, and until next time, take care, and I wish you all clear skies.